Hello, welcome to episode 53 of the Daily Disney Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Before we get going, I would encourage you to please give us a follow on your favorite podcast outlet. Um, We're on all of the different outlets, Google, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, everything like that. So please give us a follow. Also, we are on YouTube, Daily Disney Podcast, and Twitter, Daily Disney Pod. If you can give us a follow there, that'd be awesome. We are going to continue to push these podcasts every single day. I want to make sure that you are notified when a new one comes out. <clears throat> so today, as I clear my throat because I'm in the middle of the winter doldrums here in Indiana, uh, we ended up with about eight inches of snow yesterday. So again, these escapes to Disney World for me are amazing and needed. So thank you for joining me while I do so. Um, uh, If you were not here, I would just be talking to myself in my office like an idiot. So thank you for for being here and listening. So today we're going to take a trip to Epcot, as, uh, as, as I like to do. And we're going to visit one of the pavilions that is at the top of people's lists, Quick, uh, quick trip over there. They have to get there early to get on the ride. It's Norway, the Norway Pavilion at Epcot. It's a Norwegian themed pavilion that's part of World Showcase within Epcot, and it sits between Mexico and China. The fifty-eight thousand square foot Norway Pavilion is designed to look like a Norwegian village. The village includes detailed reproduction of. Uh, S-T-A-V-E Church. I don't think that's Stave, but maybe Stave Church. And the exterior of its main table service restaurant, restaurant, restaurant Akershus. It resembles its namesake in Oslo. The exhibit showcases four styles of Norwegian architecture. <clears throat> I can't pronounce any of those four, so you have to use your brain. Use your imagination because... There's four different types of architecture. If you've been to the pavilion, you kind of understand and see those. Most of the pavilion is taken up by the interconnected shops. These shops are decorated with large wooden trolls and sell Norwegian goods, including clothing, candy, statuettes of Norse gods and trolls. The courtyard or pavilion contains the entrance to Frozen Ever After, Kringla Bakery, and that bakery features Norwegian pastries such as cream horns and the open-faced salmon sandwiches. The courtyard contains the entrance to restaurant Akershus featuring hot and cold buffet and the princess storybook dining. One former exhibit was a full-scale full scale Viking ship inspired by Osberg ship. Formerly a children's play area, the structure was removed in December of 2008. And I'm glad it was removed then because it would definitely be removed now. Um... The Norway Pavilion is the most recent nation to be added to World Showcase. It soft opened in May of 1988, but the grand opening did not occur until a month later, when Harold V of Norway, then was the crown prince, dedicated the pavilion in a ceremony that was broadcast live to Norway. The original idea was to create a Nordic pavilion that would combine elements of the various countries into one exhibit. Three countries were consulted, but it finally ended up with vestors from a Norway raising $30 million required to create an exclusive national pavilion. Disney contributed the other one-third of the construction cost. In 92, the investors sold their stake to Disney, and nearly as many people visit Epcot as live in Norway. The government felt it was still a good promotional tour for their, nor- uh, for their tourism industry. The federal government continued to contribute over $200,000 annually for five years to help fund the exhibit, Renewed in 97 for another five years, the government stopped payments in 2002. In 2014, Disney officials announced that Maelstrom would be closed and renovated into a new attraction based on the company's hit animated film, Frozen. And the ride would be called Frozen Ever After, which opened in 2016. Features the same ride vehicles, the basic course, the overall attraction, but the scenes inspired by the film Frozen replaced everything with Maelstrom. Due to the popularity and media fan base of Frozen, uh, they um, it was a very, very short construction time. Basically, it's the same ride. They just changed everything inside of it. The boats are the same. The setup's the same. 
little drops the same. They just changed what you see, basically. The addition of Frozen Ever After is intended to bring more attention to Epcot, as well as Scandinavian culture represented through the Norway Pavilion. So, there are a lot of great shops here, a lot of great things to see. Um, the first really... You, you, we can talk the, the Puffins Rooster, the Wandering Reindeer, but really the, the the shop to the left has got the big troll inside. That's where you get a ton of frozen merchandise now. They've still got a lot of other things. Um, what I like about it is it's just got really a bunch of just cool, unique things that you really don't see anywhere else. They've got their own individual candies. Of course, a lot of the frozen stuff. Um, that restaurant, Shoes has got that... Um, that salmon sandwich that they said that's very, very, um, very, very popular. Um, and it, it, some people are very, very frustrated. Very, very frustrated. Um, one thing that's not changed is that the Kringle Bakery, they still got that church bread. It is very, very popular. It's a pastry. Um, I've never had it, but it looks amazing. It's one of those that we were going to try to get our last trip, but Uncle COVID had other plans. Um, <clears throat> so that's definitely going to be on the on the must stop. Not to totally take a left there, but food. Um, but the shopping. The shopping is really, really cool. There's just a ton of frozen stuff in there. And I was one that liked, I liked Maelstrom. I think it was cool. But even though I have two boys, they probably would have said it was okay, but I think they enjoy the Frozen ride better because you know the characters. And one of the big things with Epcot was Nemo kind of just snuck into Epcot. It was like, oh, okay, it's the Nemo Pavilion. And then when when Frozen was announced, it was like chaos. Oh my gosh, you're bringing characters. You're bringing characters to Epcot. You're not supposed to do that. Epcot is all about no Disney characters or any of this stuff. Well, it ended up being a huge success. The Pavilion is super popular. Now, with Ratatouille over at France, you almost have these bookends where you're going Mexico here and then over there. Like, you've got to have something to do in Epcot. You've got to have something to do in World Showcase. And this is a phenomenal pavilion because the shopping is really, really cool. The architecture is really, really cool. Um, and the ride's really cool. The inside's awesome. There's also a little area where you can go in and meet Anna and Elsa. Um, it's, it's just kind of one of those over to the left there. It's just a meet and greet. But what you go through, <clears throat> what I like is what Disney does is they go all in. The architecture all looks the same. It all feels the same. And this truly does feel like you're taken to another country. Now, the downside is it's often 100 degrees, 90 degrees, so you don't really feel like you're in the middle of winter. But going into the ride is really, really cool. They did a great job with Frozen Ever After. They did a great job of upgrading that. The troll, the trolls and Maelstrom, I mean, they were getting a little old. They were. They were getting a little stale. Um, it was fine. It was a fun ride. But I like Frozen Ever After better. I do, even though I loved Maelstrom. Um, the part that I wish they still had was the opening where the boat kind of came back. And you could look back and see the actual pavilion. And then you went. That's sealed off so that doesn't happen anymore. But I thought that was really, really cool. That's one thing that I wish this pavilion had. Um, the, the shopping is really, really fun. I don't eat a lot of Scandinavian food, so the food's not really up my alley. The desserts are. I want to try that church bread like nobody's business. I do. I think it'll be amazing. But overall, this is a good pavilion. It's fun. It's a must-see, especially if you have girls or daughters. It is a must-see to meet Anna and Elsa with the boys. We kind of did a drive-by. We kind of went in, looked around. Um, the shopping's cool, but now I'm going to go a little negative here. When they went with Frozen, it's all Frozen. There are a few other things in there, like I said, the snacks and the trinkets and some stuff like that. But, man, if you want a, if you want a Frozen figurine or uh, stuffed animal or shirt or anything, you got it. You can get those girls' dresses in there. So having two boys coming at it from that angle, eh, it's a little tough. It's a little tough to do some shopping in there, but it's still fun. Fun to visit. Um, the ride is top notch. It's one that you ride every single time. Uh, it's a ride that you formerly would get a fast pass for. Now with Lightning Lane, Genie, whatever it is, yes, you probably should um, because the line will get long. And the queue is really, really cool too. You really do feel like you're in another country. You feel like you're preparing to 
and to step into that world of Frozen. Um, also, fun fact, there's bathrooms around to the left towards Mexico. Very, 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 very clean. Not many people use them. Um, that was kind of a secret that we went to when we were on World Showcase. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what it is now a few years later, but those bathrooms were top-notch that nobody really went to. So, um, yeah, it's a fun pavilion. It's fun. You get through Mexico. Mexico is a lot of fun. There's a lot of great shopping there, a lot of great food in my eyes, a lot of great drinks. And then you get to Norway, and it's what what I think centers around this pavilion is the attraction, obviously, the shopping for um, those people that love frozen. And then I think the food might come in a third, but some people will change that up. I'm a picky eater. I don't eat much, uh, crazy food, Scandinavian food, anything like that. I'm playing. So it's a little different for me, but, um, that's it. That's our look at, that's our look at Norway. Sorry. There's not a lot other, uh, other things going on. I mean, they've got a lot of, um, they've got a lot of galleries there. You can look at the artwork, you can look at different things like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's, it's one of those where are you going to spend an entire day in this pavilion? No. Are you going to stop by or for sure? Yes, you are. Definitely. 100% you're going to stop here for the ride. So that's it for us. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Please make sure you like and subscribe on all of your podcast outlets. And we will be back with you tomorrow. Thank you. Take care.